Good afternoon and welcome to our viewers online. Welcome to our first time doing an official hybrid, fully hybrid event of in-person and live streaming. Um, we're here to, we are here to open, um, open up our Caribbean Heritage Month exhibition um, in collaboration with Island Space. And um, before we get started, um, I'd like to ask the Executive Director of History Fort Lauderdale, Patricia Zeiler, to say a few words on behalf of our organization and our multi-year partnership. Okay, welcome everybody. We're so glad you're joining us. This is um, History Fort Lauderdale, um, one of the oldest institutions in Broward County, celebrating 60 years next year. Um, this camera? Yes. Oh, so, 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 and we are so pleased to have this exhibit again this year. It, it is it is it, it exponentially more excellent every year that our friends do this. And this year, I think, is just a, the, the most magnificent collection of art. So please stop and see us when you have an opportunity. We're right in the heart of downtown. The exhibit is free, so you can have a chance to you know exhibit in both galleries experience the galleries and experience this magnificent art and celebrate Caribbean Heritage Month. So we're so glad you joined us. Welcome and glad that you all are up here live too. Thank you. So much. And next I'd like to hand the mic and the rest of the evening over to my good friend, Miss Khalib Thompson. Lovely people. We're hoping that more people will join us as the evening progresses. But I want to thank those of you who have made it and those of you who are watching online. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks to Patricia and Tara and Kamal, our friends at History Fort Lauderdale. Uh, this is our third year doing the island imprint at History Fort Lauderdale. This is where we started, um, well, our second year of Taste the Islands, which is our multi year event series. Um, it is where our culinary museum started, which was the inception of Island Space as a Caribbean museum and as a nonprofit. Uh, our friends at History Fort Lauderdale kind of ushered us into creating the nonprofit, and so we're very grateful to them for their facilitation. And even as we build our own thing, um, that continued partnership that Patricia and her team have uh, facilitated for us. So, thank you. Uh, this evening, we have four, actually this, uh, this year with the Island Imprint, we have four spectacular artists, four very, well, three handsome men and one sexy one. <laughs> so if y'all don't know, this is, um, this is Charles Mike Fe Mark Feist, Mark. Um, over here is David Sexy Man Muir. Uh, I believe Mark Cameron is on the way as well. And uh, Paul Black, Blackwood couldn't make it this evening, uh, but he sends his regards. He would have liked to be here. Um, and the wonderful art that you're looking at in this room belongs to Mark Fai, <laughs> Charles Mark Fai Smart on the, on the walls over here. His collection is untitled, uh, but he has a series right now going on called uh, Jamaica Heroes Modernized. So I'm going to actually jump into it and just start with you, Charles. Mm -hmm. Charles or Mark Fai? <laughs> Mark is fine. All right. Yeah. So Charles. <laughs> I know he was Charles, right? So um, so talk about Jamaican heroes. Well, first of all, inside of the room, we're looking at Marcus Garvey. We're looking at, I don't remember the name of this. He said it was a, a village in um, in Africa somewhere. We have an image of Che Guevara in the back. We have Bob Marley. We have a lion. And then we have a uh, happy Buddha over here, right? So, um, so everybody's not seeing everything, but there are these very rich, vibrant uh, colors, and you've translated that aesthetic into a collection you call Jamaican Heroes Modernized. Why did you want to do that? Well, the project really was birthed out of um, something else that happened uh, around George Floyd mm -hmm. and the 46 piece body of work that I did to depict George Floyd's last words. And that led me to something more deep inside of um, how I feel about the place of black people in the world, which led me to Marcus Garvey. And that is what inspired me to do that painting. And so when I did that painting, and as, as I go into the painting, um, I usually research the subjects to really understand you know, who they were, what they were about, more in depth. And that led me to our Jamaican national 
and our Jamaican national heroes. I saw how they were being depicted, and I made the decision to upgrade, if you will, or modernize the way that they look. Some of our images are the black and white sketches, the black and white photographs, and they don't really give life to the, or dignify the national heroes based on the contribution and sacrifices that they made. So that was how that was birthed. So it's not, not, now a collection, all seven of them, and we're continuing with two other um, heroes, or heroes to be, uh, Louise Bennett mm -hmm. and Bob Marley, to have them alongside these heroes um, to show the continuation of heroism and how you know the heroism of one group of people basically lead the way to the next group and how they stand on shoulders and how that continues. That people know that heroism is not something in the past, it's not dead, it continues, and this collection is about that. It's a bigger part of a bigger project. The project is uh, is five prom, the paintings um, are the first piece. Then we're also in a ten episode docu series to uh, depict the story and the lives of the heroes uh, and the worst people to Jamaican culture. Also original music. Oh, yeah. original music. I think I'm speaking to anyone here. <laughs> Don't shout at everybody. <laughs> no, but we also have original music and a digital platform. We're going to centralize everything online, so it's easy for them to go online to JamaicanNationalHeroes.com and find out everything about Jamaica's national heroes, and um, of course, take it back to Jamaica and complement those walls in Jamaica painted with the national heroes with additional context about the heroes. So it's a bigger project, and this is the painting was the catalyst to it. What I wanted to do actually today was kind of take them in a story through what, through how, because the the way that this is laid out. Here, it's really more about a life story, my how I got to here. So what we did just now was literally got to the end, which is the, <laughs> at the, the end, beginning. and over here is the beginning. That fat baby is you. Um, 
I'm going to do because she's going to look back at me one day and say, hey, daddy, you lived at this moment in time. What was it like and what did you do? What did you do, <laughs> Charles? What did you do? So, so, I, I, I felt the way about the protest because my, my outlook on the protest was the protest was a continuation, continuing the same cycle of protest, protest fatigue, dies down, no real organization and action that is mo mobilized and activated to move forward. And I was like, I don't want to be a part of something that I think is necessary immediately to demonstrate the intensity of the moment, right? But I also think about what are we going to be able to do to leave something behind that's going to shift the hearts and minds of people? Because we're not fighting a system, we're fighting, we're not fighting anything really. We're trying to shift people's hearts and minds into a certain place that doesn't allow Derek Chauvin to feel comfortable about behaving in the way that he did, he did because his heart and his mind is not in that place anymore, right? And so that consciousness that we have to shift is what I kept thinking about. And so I saw this painting that was that depicted um, his last 46 pleas. So it was his last 46 words while Derek Chauvin had his knee on his neck. And um, I watched the video one time. I could only watch it one time. I watched it twice totally, but at that point, I only watched it once. And I, um, I felt like if I don't do something in this moment to leave something behind, so in the future, there is something that captured what happened here, knowing how I felt and my history, which will go into in a few moments, I knew that it was an opportunity that was to be missed. So, I created a painting that listed his, all his, his words um, on it. And even after I did that, I still had so much doing the painting because, you know, you're doing a piece, you're reading the same words over and over and over and over again. And if you watch that video and know what those words meant, you understand how it was a hard painting, right? Because it was digging deep inside all those other feelings and emotions of, me as a black man, that could be me. Um, and I don't want my daughter to live in a world in the future that looks anything like this world, right? And so I created a docu series of it. And that docu series. We have to stick up in No <laughs> problem. We have no to stick up in there. If you want to learn more about Charles and his docu series, please visit uh, markfycreations.com. Mark Yes. There's there's a whole lot more on there. He has a lot on YouTube. He has a um the paint. I, I've seen some of those paintings from the George Floyd era, and they're spectacular. But we have a limited time here, yeah, so no um so I'm gonna actually jump over to Sexy Man, who we can't see. <laughs> we can't see his images inside of this room. However, in the next room, uh, he has a collection of uh, pieces that he did from his trip to Santiago de Cuba last year. No. And Two years ago. Two years ago. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Two years ago. <laughs> yeah, we were having a year. Yeah, yeah. We have that gap year last year. That's what year that doesn't exist. Two years ago. But Sexy Man calls himself a photo artist because he takes photos and they look like art. He actually mounts them, uh, prints them onto canvas and mounts them like you see these paintings here. And they're spectacular and vibrant. And he went around Cuba and or Santiago. <laughs> and um, took pictures of the people and the landscapes and the fortalezas and the um, Copacabana, I don't know. Um, and, and, um, and, and so there's this really beautiful collection. And when you see, if you, if you come here, and you should come here, we are at History Fort Lauderdale. It is 301... 231 Southwest 2nd Avenue. 231 Southwest 2nd Avenue in uh, Fort, downtown Fort Lauderdale, right? Um, come here and have a look. And you can read about the artists on these little you know, panels that we have on the wall. And David, I asked each of them what was the inspiration for the collections that we have here. And he said something to the effect of, you know, it's such a, Cuba is such a beautiful country. Um, the people are so vibrant, have so much to say, but they've been muted by whatever the circumstance is there. At the same time, I'm looking at these pictures and I see, I don't know if I see joy in the people, but I see, 
happy, particularly with the musicians, right? Yeah. You have the man with the maracas or whatever, and the ones playing the guitars, and the, and you see happy, some amount of happiness. So what did you learn from these people while you were there, interacting with them, and how did that inform um, how you approach this, this collection? challenging thoughts in my head. Uh, so, of course, thank you for having me. Business <laughs> partner. <laughs> it's not that we see each other every day. <laughs> but, 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 okay, but seriously, um, you know, obviously I'm a part of the island space, I'm a part of all that we do, but this does bring out the personal for me, um, Cuba, uh, that particular trip in 2019, the summer we spent, um, I'm going to say about two weeks in Cuba, just about, and, you know, it, I, was, I was really affected by the lack of resources um, that exist. It's easy to ignore if you have that ability, but I can't go anywhere and ignore what is the plight of the people. And why I use the term muted that you um, reference here is that no one is genuinely happy with their circumstance. I mean, no, I didn't meet one person in Cuba who likes what it's like to be living in Cuba. But they, they're not saying it because they're patriots and they're nationalists and they're, you know, they're in this system together, but no one is happy about it. No one is happy to not have enough food to eat. No one is happy to not have the seasonings that you need to, to put in the food to have it taste good. No one is happy to be waiting for, you know, whatever your small um, rations are that's given to you by the government. No one is happy to not own their residence. No one is, no one is happy. They're happy in moments, but they're not. Happy every day. Mark, this is your seat. <laughs> we, have a, we have another Mark joining us. Mark, I played three more that shirt. No, no, you go over there. Mary, promise me that shirt that month. I'm not going to go in. Back to the program. <laughs> but, but it's a good vibe to see you, my brother. I'm good to see you. Um, but, but sincerely, because I want to celebrate joy. It is always difficult for me when I, I meet up with situations that really are not very happy. And so I enjoyed every part of my trip, but there was bits of sadness because of the conditions that people are existing in. And I hope that what I share, what I document, gives a little bit of both. Because again, there are happy moments. There are the moments that I celebrate in that journey. But I do believe that there is an underlying sadness throughout because the people are not able to freely do what they would like. And it, there's too much of a dependence on the government. I am not knowledgeable enough to criticize their system of government, but I can tell that the people are suffering because of it. And that is a sad situation for me. Yeah. Thank you. Um... All right, since Mark is here, and I think we, yeah. Um, so Mark, I'm gonna jump over to Mark. If we have time, I'll go back to the other one. This year, <laughs> <He's laughs> <trying. laughs> for today. Um, for today. Um, so Mark, your collection, and if you're if you're looking at the camera where you see me living here, uh, you're looking at Mark's work over here, and you can see you, Roy, on the right in the blue background. You can see the cool ruler. Nanny, right? <laughs> and you can see uh, burning spear. There, you're not seeing nanny around the corner uh, behind us, but th this is Mark's collection of four pieces that are right here. No, and Bob down the hallway. Oh yes, okay. Bob is down the hallway. Yes, five isolation. Five uh, Mark camera, not Mark five. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and so, in in looking at these. You know, I see, I see, I feel a lot of music, and I've, I've seen your work progressing over the years. You have a distinctive style. Um, I, I do wonder, though, I see the influence of music in the subject matter that you go after, 
But I remember having a song crash with you one time and I won. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to understand how music. <laughs> How does music influence your approach to art separate and apart from the, the subject matter? Well, music, you know, musicians are storytellers. Um, I think we're aligned as artists. Um, we, there has to be some accuracy. Um, you know, we tell our story. And, um, speak up so that people are like it. I've met, I've met all three of these gentlemen on the Reggae Sun Splash Tour many years ago. Um, you were always a dear friend of mine. And he's actually the latest painting that I did, you know. Um, music, you know, music is life, and so is art. And, you know, we have an obligation as storytellers to be, um, to leave a light onto somebody else, you know, mm -hmm. to, to, to spread that good vibe, whatever it may be. Uh, we exist in a world where there is chaos sometimes, and sometimes there is good times, and we have to reflect how we feel in this dispensation, you know, how we feel about what we're doing and how we, we project our art. Mm -hmm. um, on the bigger picture, I think I would like to immerse myself in all genres of art. I'm not just an artist. You know, I'm into poetry, I build houses, you know, I'm a culinary artist. So and in everything that I do, there's even in, in the culinary side, there's a level of accuracy that has to um, be, 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 be kept, be, be, be set on the line, you know. I've had people, it's a quick example, I've had people eat the festival with, um, with, with cinema. Mm -hmm. No, me knows the festival, no, I'm cinema. <laughs> so call it something else, you know. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I, I grew up with a family of that. Feel away from that. Feel away from that. You know, what I'm saying? I grew up in a time where I met Mami, yeah. who did the original festival at Hellshire Beach. Mm -hmm. We know it's so no cinema in Martin. Right? <laughs> so, you know, so cinema in Martin. If, 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 if persons are just trying to festival for the first time, and then Roy said to me many years ago, I was on tour, and I said, how do you feel about these different artists that are on tour, you know? I said, boy, Mark, you know, you know the man that's a shoemaker now. So I said, okay, but he's doing reggae. He said, yeah, but you know, I don't really reggae that in a man. <laughs> you know, because, so he's looking at what his craft that was brought up to him and what he originated as, as well. And if you're not telling the story um, accurate, then call it what it is. Call it abstract regular art, mm -hmm. art, art or whatever, or, or um, your own interpretation. But, but don't, don't label a genre that, you're, that is not what it is. And my, my focus in my own little lane is to, is to represent the truth, be it politics. Or... <laughs> We're not going down that road. <laughs> or, 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 my, or my brush. Or your brush. No, so. okay, I'm mostly my testimony. No cinema the festival. Uh, Mark is also a photographer and a furniture maker and a crafts person. Yeah, yeah. And, yes, he, he's got a good man of all trades. as he said. Yeah. Well, yeah, do, uh, do, does the audience have any questions before we go on? Because I'll keep going if nobody has questions. Yeah? All right, so let's stay, stay with Mark. Um, you're, you, you do call yourself the great, or people call you, who, who came up with the great then? I did an interview on Fox about 24 years ago at my restaurant. Mm -hmm. And um, I was putting on a thing called the, um, the Taste of Oceanside Music Festival. And um, Fox reporter came down to my restaurant and he was looking at my art and walls. He saw my jerk saws that I had in 400 stores. I designed my flyer. Because he's also a graphic artist. I designed, I designed my sauce <laughs> label. And he said, he said, you know, you're the Renaissance man, you know, the year, and it kind of stuck. Mm -hmm. So this has been going on for 24 years. I didn't really call myself Renaissance man. It's something that this guy, um, lately put man. Mm -hmm. I think you're losing out. I think a little bit too much more powerful than you, kind of said. Like, I kind myself say so. I think it's, I think it's so much more powerful when you own it. So what you own it. I do. I mean, if you want to build it, you can
right now, it's really about empowering Jamaicans, eating Jamaican food. Nothing important. So my challenge for the next year and now is really to travel, travel Jamaica and try to deal with all that we have we produce in Jamaica and add my flavor to it. And hopefully people understand that sometimes the best of what you need is right beside you. I love it during that. Um, preservatives and all that. I know yeah. yeah. this can tackle that in this forum, <laughs> but but it's funny because even our national dish don't include necessarily um, <laughs> indigenous <laughs> Jamaican things. Because codfish don't come from Jamaica, <laughs> and <laughs> we have a problem. <laughs> well, the you is accessorized. Right. Celebrity photographer journey, right? I'm going to call you. I'm, I'm going to label you a celebrity photographer, whether you want to it or not, right? Um, with pieces of Jamaica that was celebrating Jamaica's 50th anniversary in 2012. Okay. So, nine years ago. Mm -hmm. Nine years ago. <laughs> um, and your photography has grown. I know because I do business with you on a daily basis. And, you know, the, the, the images. You were about the Rasta man in the Aki tree, and you were about the people pushing the hand carts and the people roasting the corn and whatever. But the the way that you approach images, I think, is, is very similar to what it was. But the photography, the quality of the photography itself has been huge tremendously. What has been the, the journey for you? What have you learned over that time? Well, we learn every day. You know, I mean, if I'm not improving, I hope that I'm dead because. The thing is, experience is a wonderful thing. Like, so, you know, where I was, let's just say, let's go with 10 years ago. Um, you know, photography changed from being my hobby to being my profession in that time frame. So when I approached doing the work that's seen in Pieces of Jamaica, that was for the love of my country. It was for the love of the people from my country. And that was what I was celebrating. I was not attempting to create a work of photographic art. The, the entirety of my purpose then was to tell the story of the love of my nation, to the love of its people, and sort of represent my childhood. These were the images that told the story of what I saw growing up in Jamaica. Now that I have transition from just doing this to, to share my raw passion of the love I have for Jamaica to being a full-time professional photographer, creating works for clients that are very demanding and it's changed my aesthetic in some regard because I know that what I'm doing is for a dollar value and I have to produce a certain type of work. And so now what has happened is that there's a little bit of a merge between that raw documentation of culture with also the polish this is what we give to a commercial client and i think that the combination of those two is what you see today and the and i, I, I want to put a button on that question because that started with saying that the subject matter the way that you approach the subject matter has not changed a whole lot uh, to me am i correct in that is, is there a consistency that 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 immovable thing no, it's changed a little bit. Yeah. So what I would say with, to, to that point is that if I'm documenting culture, then my work is the same. I, I don't change my approach to people within a cultural context, mm -hmm. but I shoot so many other types of work now that, yeah, it, I have an overall shift in sort of my paradigm for documenting things. Mm -hmm. Because again, depending on the audience, I can't just give something that's really showcasing, you know, deep culture or, or, or even more than sort of the sense of street candid photography, that I've had to leave that behind somewhat to, to really address the needs of my commercial client. And the summer five, Charles. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. you, you started out as 
anonymous. You, you were marked by as your okay. I guess, pen name or your artist mm -hmm. name and child smart from your daily life, mm -hmm. Clark and Superman and um, And you also talk about, um, I, I don't know how you phrase it, but you, your, your work has a lot to do with your charity and act, act. you talk about activism, but the, mm -hmm. the charity side of your work as well. Can you talk about the anonymity and why that was important to you and then how you use your work for charitable purposes? Um, and so when I first started, I didn't want anyone to know it was me. No, it was me. I found that the paint box. I went to um, paint and sip. Before you finish your story, can you just for the audience that's online, tell them what does book ups mean already? Because <laughs> <laughs> there may be some people who are not unfamiliar with the word the term, book ups. <laughs> By chance, <laughs> by chance, I went to a paint and sip, did a painting with the, the instructor said I should do something with it. And a few months later, I did a painting, and um, after I did it, um, it was just a fun and hobby at the time, until I did a painting this, of this image, not that same painting, but of this image of Bob Marley. And I submitted to the Bob Marley um, group online, Facebook page. It, one morning wake up, everything is like the Facebook is blowing up. My Facebook page is blowing up. The painting got like 400,000 likes and 30,000 wow. shares. So that was the moment that my, my mom said to me, you know what, we probably should do something. Like this. <laughs> <laughs> so, just, just, just probably. <laughs> like this stuff. So after that, I decided, okay, I wanted to continue to but I was focusing sincerely at the time, and I really wanted to do it anonymously, because I figured I could hide behind this image, and you know, she said it was a gift, her words were, this is a gift that I'm giving to you, and so I looked at it as something I could use as an agent to help and make impact. So I had a marketing background, made up this whole brand around Mark Five Creations, and then push that out there, and the whole model behind it, which still is, is about creating impact. So Mark Five is about creating impact. So what we've done over the years, and I still say we, because it's two different people. Those things are talking about right up as well. I know a good cause. No, <laughs> <laughs> so, but um, I basically have helped charities all over the world to raise money for their causes. So I do that, I partner with charity organizations, we custom create a piece, um, they go, and it's usually organizations that have the means to be able to get an art with the people. And we auction the pieces off, and all of the proceeds have gone to benefiting those charitable organizations. I still fund indirectly through the prints that are sold from those pieces continuously. I started that in China, and I've done it pretty much all over the world. This piece that you see here was one of the pieces that actually um, was inspired by another charitable event that I did. Sierra Leone is called Kening, um, the Star of Keningo. There's um, a village where there was a landslide, which you guys probably heard about a few years ago. And so this was the village, and this was like one of the images that went all over the world. Um, but I used my art to create impact um, and in that way um, make a change. And so I've been helping charge organizations to raise money through the art that I create. And I only started selling my art in 2010. Now, I started in 2015. All right, I was looking to see if there are any questions online. I don't see any. Does anyone in our audience here have questions? Michelle. Yeah. <laughs> Is Michelle? <laughs> <laughs> so for David, what is it you enjoy more? Do you enjoy taking pictures of artists or just taking picture of, you know, Jamaica? What do you find more challenging or more interesting? Thank you for the question. Um, enjoyable. What speaks to you? So, okay, let me address what speaks to me. Mm -hmm. I, I enjoy it all. I, I love what I do. I, I am blessed to also be able to earn a living doing what I love to do. So it's, it's genuinely a, a great blessing. Um, I tend to prefer the things that I find more challenging. Uh, so if it comes down to what I love to do more, it's really what's most challenging at the time. So when I started documenting 
uh, performances by artists, it was extremely challenging. And so I was, you know, I was really driven to do that very well. But I think not, not that I can ever perfect or master something like that because it's such a, a challenging thing to do in that, you know, you're not in control of the lights, you're not in control of the movement of the artist, you're not, there's no direction at all. So it's always going to be very challenging, but I've done it enough that I now feel that that's not as challenging anymore. So as to what's the thing I love the most or, you know, what speaks to me, I, I love music. I've been in music my entire mm -hmm. life. So, you know, there's always going to be this particular love for um, concert photography or just documenting artistry. Like Mark Cameron stated, you know, like there's all these different forms of artistic expression, one of which I use as photography to express my thoughts about the world. And I love that I can document performers doing their work and their art. But I, it's hard for me to say that that's what speaks to me the most now because I genuinely have new challenges, which the challenges always really feel the best. Because when you can overcome your deficiencies in a particular area, for me, that is where I find the greatest joy because I love all types of photography. I'm so glad you said that. Mm. <laughs> 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 I purchased a camera a couple, couple years back. And this is Vicky, by the way. <laughs> Vicky. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. And I just don't know. It's not a it's not a point and shoot. So, like, what would you suggest is the best way for me to learn how to use my use my camera? Because I'm really intimidated by it. Oh. So, so genuinely, I would have suggested you take my class. Mm -hmm. But I'm a business partner who's not allowing me to do <laughs> most of the things I used to do. No, um, I would I would highly recommend taking a class, but I also recommend that informing yourself. I mean, there's YouTube, there's a lot of ways to learn things without depending on a set schedule and so on. I know based on the work you do, you may not have the, the most flexible schedule to do a, a set mm -hmm. um, system of classes. But it would also be great to talk to other people who have a passion for what you do. So even if there is no club accessible to you, I do know lots of photography groups. If you join one of the groups, you don't have to go all the time. There's no you know, fixed thing that mandatory. But just talking to other people who have a passion for it, it would be tremendous for you. Because you can get, you can learn by making a call. You know, it's like Saturday morning, you're going to, go and take some pictures of the ducks in the pond mm -hmm. and use one idea from a friend you just call them and say, hey, what do you think my setting should be? You know, how, how should I approach it? And in 15 minutes, you've learned a whole lot. And you can... mm -hmm. So I think finding people who have similar passions and desires would really be a great way to learn. Mm -hmm. Can I add to that? Um, since I'm the photographer, really. <laughs> 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 content is very important. Sometimes I've seen pictures that are not necessarily the most best lighting and all that kind of stuff, but the content needed what it was. So it's, it's good to get a camera that you can actually uh, quick notice mm -hmm. because great scenes are not necessarily <laughs> hanging around for you, well, for you. Mm -hmm. You just have to work to capture those. And I've found that most of my photography, the ones that I've done, and the ones that I mostly appreciate are the ones that I was able to catch because I was lucky, I was in the right place, place at the right time. Mm -hmm. And having that as a side note, I mean, I find that my phone, unfortunately, the phone, the, the, the bulk of the camera, mm -hmm. you can't just walk around with a, you know, with a camera. I wish I could just have a phone <laughs> that can just do that. Right yeah. away, I can just pull it out and take my picture. You know? okay. but, but with the different settings that yeah. you think, you know, that you might want, <laughs> you can have so many phone and so many on your camera, you know, on your professional camera. So, so Mark, right. <laughs> do you paint normally just by vision or how does that work for you when you're painting? When I first started painting, I, I mostly did the imaginative compositions and listen to his story, you know, brings back the memories to me. I missed Jamaica a lot. Jamaica in the 70s, when I was trying to figure out why my parents needed in this this place. And um, it kept me. Grown in Jamaica. 
and I couldn't wait to get back to Jamaica. I mean, I was, I was pitching all the different scenes my parents were taking me to when I was younger. The online audience can hear you. It was mostly in my composition. Okay. As I got more involved and I want more accuracy in, in terms of uh, painting, I would take pictures and reflect on lighting and how to, you know, how to yeah. best present yeah. those paintings. Um, so that's, that's kind of how. And do you enjoy painting, cooking? What is it that you enjoy? Because you do so many different things, building. No, I've been criticized. And I've said it for being inconsistent. So you consider yourself mercury, not sure where you want to no, be? No, I'm no. inconsistent. 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 I can confirm that. <laughs> Somebody who suffers from that same. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about the inconsistency, but but when you're when you're you have a knack of doing multiple things and you're a creative person, people will say that to you all the time when you're inconsistent and whatever. But you don't like all of it. I mean, I'm, I'm, not, not, I'm not going to have anybody define yeah. my okay. right. no. my trajectory. That's right. It's just some say that I I want to do exactly as I please. But guess what? We're all of the millions and trillions of DNA floating around, mm -hmm. we're the lucky ones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Today, we are the ones that have made it in this human mm -hmm. form. Mm -hmm. And I don't take it very lightly. Mm -hmm. I came as world by myself, and I'm going to be by myself. But hopefully, I want to leave with nothing left. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I want to extract every bit of life out of me before we go. I want to drive like a prune. Just go and say, why wait? I don't want this death from nothing. I yes. just want this gold and, you know, with, with nothing left. Yes. And in, that, in the context of that, the culinary side is important to me as well. So, but food is limited. On June 27, I'm, I'll be 60 years old. Wonderful. Really? I don't really feel you know, different than like, so like I'm 27 or... You look better now than you did when you were pretty stinky. You look like fine wine. So, 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 so that's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's important yeah. that you have the proper fuel in your body mm -hmm. to execute what yeah. you like to different do. Right. Clear mind. So all of those things are important. Your mental health. Some people, it's, you know, this man. A game changer for me many years ago. I call it antiques as well. <laughs> I saw this piece of furniture, which is about 300 years ago, I bought from at an auction. And I was changing my shoes and you know, looking at this in front of me. I said, hold on. What makes me think I'm the last person to own this piece of furniture? And that hit me. I said, you know something? I am going to enjoy life. I'm not going to run on money. I'm not really, I'm going to have money after that still. <laughs> no, run that down. I, I'm going to paint regardless of if you buy my art or not. Never paint. And if I end up with that whole school of paint, that, 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 that's what it's going to be because Thanks. nobody can stop me from painting with God. That's my expression. For a listen, man, we'll I have not yet to go to the interview and I like that. But there's a lot of terminology. I mean, nah, but this and me. Yeah, <laughs> What does this mean for the for the viewing audience? Can we can we articulate it in another language? The jumpy and the pumps up. Does it make more sense? If I keep getting in my mind, I don't know. I don't know. There is any chance of that. You know what I mean? I'm actually I'm actually gonna ask if there's any questions for Charles before we wrap it up. Charles, like. I I love the whole lot. Sorry, Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question for three of them. I know you said your mother that you put it on you put it on Facebook and then everybody the next morning woke up and all of a sudden four hundred thousand people. Yeah. But when when did you each one of you knew that you had a gift for the art? Right. Like what age did you start to like your eyes started to see what you really wanted to gravitate to? I'm just curious. <laughs> And all three of you. It is for beauty. Um for me, um I, I don't I don't I think it was I don't I never called myself an artist when I first started the painting. Okay. It was more like um I like to do this thing. People like what I am doing. Because I was doing it at first for a purpose. It was more like 
I went to this thing, I saw it, I discovered it, I liked it, I'm going to keep doing it. It wasn't a focus, okay, I'm going to be an artist. I never even called myself that, literally, when I said probably in 2019. And it was like, all right, I'm going to I call myself an artist, not an artist. So, the, um, I don't think other moment, I think now I am starting to perform on the fact that people appreciate the stuff that I do, and I'm using it now to, as I always have, but now with a front face, me coming out and using it to be a bigger force for change in a very deliberate and intimate, intentional kind of way. Oh, all right. Um, yeah, I, I very similar to Charles. Never consider myself an artist or calling myself an artist until very, very recently. Um, I I think I have a lot of different talents. I don't think that you know I, my photographic art is something that I finally owned around twelve years ago. Maybe not even between twelve and nine years ago. I mean, it, it was a, a, a slow acceptance that. This is some, you know, no matter how many times people would tell me that they love my work, I still didn't think of it as work considered as art. I was just thinking, oh, they like the subject matter of the picture, the picture pleases them. It wasn't really about me, it was just about me happening to capture this moment. So I I would tell you that I, I probably first thought of myself as having this special talent around 40, 40 plus years of age, um, but I've been in so many other things, and so I felt my, I felt that to, as if I've had talents that were worthwhile and worth celebrating from much younger, but in the concept of the, you know, I'm going to say visual art, young 40s for me. Yeah. That's why I've always considered myself an artist. Um, just in a way that I think about life, um, innovative, innovative things that I've done over the years. Um, in terms of my genre of finance, many years ago uh, I did. A, I was asked to do. I was doing a, an event for um, Bill, Bill um, Charles Gills, who's a, a famous black artist. And I was purchasing t shirts. That's one of the things I did. Uh, and I was I was asked to do um, a painting of a, a famous black cowboy, Dead with Dick. Dead with Dick. It's a black um, I think he. Yeah. It's a bunslinger type of um, guy. Come on. And um, he didn't tell me how he's going to use the pin. He didn't tell me how he's going to do it. He said, This one's a pin. He said, He gave me a small uh, picture excuse me, that I was able to do on a, on a larger scale. And one day, I went to an art show in, um, in Atlanta. I didn't say California. Went to Atlanta, to a black expo. And I saw my kids in the print. That's the only one. You're an artist, correct? <laughs> <laughs> when I saw it, I didn't really, it didn't hit it with my painting because I admired it. I admired it as a good one before. So when I saw it, I was like, oh, and then I was like, wow, this painting. And I saw my name on the bottom. And the realism was really, it kind of, I got it done in that head. I'm onto something here, you know, although I've always considered myself an artist, but at one level, I think that came to me at that time. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Tara, do you have the last question? <laughs> <laughs> no, I wanted to take the last picture, though. <laughs> All right, we have time for one more question before we wrap it up. Marie? So, gentlemen, you guys have been doing this for a number of years, whether it's 2015, 2019. David has been in the artistic field since he was in his 20s. I've probably known him that long. Um, and know him from a different genre of the artistic music. That's how we met. But what is it? 
that gets you up in the morning in this in this field? What jazzes you? I, anytime I call David, it's good morning. For those of you who know him, you know that's the first thing you get. So this morning is everything. But what wakes you up? What gets you jazzed? So the question for those of you online is what wakes them up every morning? What gets them jazzed for the day? Besides my Jesus, but that's another story. <laughs> Uh, start with Mark. Mark who? Cameron. Mark. Mark. <laughs> Not Charles. Mark. I'll be, I'll be very honest. Um, what gives me up in the morning is, is trying to figure out how I can use my art to carry the message of revolution, change, stay desperate and leader among other persons who are not. Talk to the truth and what's going on in the world. So, I mean, sometimes I get up. Five the morning, I was like, how can I, how can I, like I did a piece recently <coughs> called Capture, called Shatter to a Dream. It's actually a piece in a local restaurant right now. Where mm -hmm. I'm, where I'm mm -hmm. it, it shows persons that I've had a dock, leaving a beautiful, airy location, going into darkness, skyscrapers, skies of ships, and it's an abstract piece. And what it, it, what it means is that persons who are, 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 are waiting to, to migrate never migrate. They're shackled to the possibility of migrating and remain unproductive where they are. That was the essence of why I did that piece. So, and there are many more that come along in the morning. Like, there's a little zone between 5 and 6.30, 5, 7, where my mind just takes off into a whole bunch of different directions. But it's, Consistently about um, making change, you know. Um, the beauty about not having a nine to five is the ability to um, to think. I'm not I'm not worried about mortgage and this and that. I did that many years ago. Now I'm a free man, so I'm able to think more. And people look at me like I'm back on the moon, but in fact, everything that I talk about is a level of due diligence. Involved that you may not understand. It's not Fox News or ABC or Will. This is my own search and journey for um, the, for knowledge that keeps me up to paint. And I've started that. I'm not paint as much beautiful flowers anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it exists. It exists in, in G place. My trajectory is about about what's important to me. Thank you, Mark. Uh, Charles. Um, <clears throat> I see what gets you up in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Whether you want to or not. <laughs> no, I mean, no, but that, that's what it says very, very, very right there. For me, it's legacy. Um, I, I think about legacy a lot. Um, my, my heritage helped me to understand that. My heritage in Serbia, my father there. My great great grandfather, um, he did a lot. And that history um, helped me to start thinking about what I leave behind. And I think after this is the person who came into the world, it got amplified <laughs> in terms of um, how, um, you know, what do I leave behind that will make an impact not only on her, but the world. And so creating impact is one of the things that, that moves me, that I'm really passionate about. Um, so, okay. And sexy man, finally, to wrap us up in one minute and 30 seconds. <laughs> what, is it, what is it that gets you up in the morning? Other than the smell of bacon. This is funny. Never the smell of bacon. <laughs> <laughs> My love of life, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm, I can't, I don't, I can't sleep a lot because I, I have so many things that I want to accomplish, and I'm excited about it every moment. I am up late and I'm up early, and I just want to do all the things I love. And it's so fortunate that I have this life where I get to execute the things that I love every day. So that gets me up. Um, but I, I think it's important to note. It's interesting. I'm, I'm not very driven by legacy, though I think somewhere in just being a lover of the things that I do, I think there is a legacy being created in, in it. 
Um, I, I think if it's one thing that I love as much as I love life, it's people. So I think that for me, just the connections that I have with all the different people I interact with, the friendships, the family, the business partners, all, all play a part in me being excited about life. And so that's, that's what it is. I just want to keep moving until I can't move anymore. I want to keep doing all the things that, you know, I don't know if it's impact for me, but it's, it's just being true to who I am and doing and expressing myself the ways that I see I should. Thank you to our guests. My name is Khalid Thompson. I don't think I've said that enough. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Khalid Thompson. I'm the curator of this show every year for the past three years. Hopefully we'll do it for several more. I'm inviting you, whether you're inside of this room or online, to uh, join History Fort Lauderdale here at... Tell me again. 231. 231 Southwest 2nd Avenue. 231 Southwest 2nd Avenue, as well as join us at Island Space Caribbean Museum where we always have a whole bunch of Caribbean stuff going on. And that is at uh, the Bra Westfield Broward Mall, which is 8000 West Broward Boulevard. We are right at the northeast corner. It's the northeast corner. Yes, so the website the and the launch event. Website. OK. Islandspacefl.org uh, is where you can find information about us. We are getting ready to do on June 27th. Somebody said that was your birthday? Yeah. Wow. On Mark's birthday, so he's going to be there with a big check for us. Right. Um, <laughs> but on Mark's birthday, June 27th, we are doing our very first Magic at the Museum. And it's the grand storytelling of the Caribbean story. So when you come into Island Space Museum, you see the story of the region from the indigenous people to colonialism and emancipation. How are our governments formed? What kind of food do we eat? What do we do as a culture, our traditions, our art, our sporting life? All of that stuff is told in the museum. And we're using the voices of subject matter experts, uh, including PJ Patterson, including Marcy Griffiths, Inner Circle, Kevin Little, Atto Bolden. We have sunshine girls and reggae girls and we got a whole lot of people that you want to see and you want to learn about our story. I am also, <laughs> Jack of all trades again, Jill of all trades, right? So my, my former life is in uh, production. And so myself and Luki Chan are putting this together. And I am learning so much as I put this together, so much about how, how, much, how many commonalities we all have as Caribbean people. Because the people in Puerto Rico also have the peanut man that we have. They also have it in, in, um, in the Bahamas. And everybody calls it their own thing. Um, you know, one guy from, the, from Barbados was talking about having the, 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 the tire, the wheel, the little bicycle wheel that they take out the spokes and they run yes. around with, yes. the, with, the, with a piece of wire. All of us seem to do those things. And so um, it's, it's going to be a learning experience. It's very entertaining. As far as I've seen thus far. Mm -hmm. um, you can also so you can join us free online if you visit islandspacefl.org. Uh, you can register RSVP for your free access. And if you want to join us in person, it's $50 up as a donation. So a minimum of $50 as a donation. You can join us on June 27th when Mark brings us our big check. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we will see you all there at that time. I just wanted to take, <laughs> we take all money. We take Bitcoin, sorry. I just wanted to take a moment to thank each and every one of you for being here this evening and also for sharing your beautiful work, your stories, um, your journeys with us. Um, you know, part of the reason that I love using um, contemporary art like what you guys have here as a voice of telling our history is because. History is what happens every single day. And so, you know, thank you, the artists. And also thank all of you for being here with us uh, this evening, you know, to try out this hopefully post-COVID, um, you know, way of, of doing things to give, you know, give our friends online the, the opportunity. But it's so nice to see people. <laughs> yes. like, thank you guys for, you know, for, for being here with us this evening. And please do... Follow, um, you know, follow the artists, follow Island Space, and follow History Fort Lauderdale on, on your favorite social media. Um, the, the live stream that we did today um, is right now available only to the people who are SVP for live stream. 
but it will be posted automatically on our YouTube pages, you know, within an hour or so after, after the event. So um, don't be strangers, you know, we're, we're here, we're neighbors, we're, um, we're relatives, and, and thank you again. For being here. And please, everyone, do look. There's two rooms and other things We'll walk you around. Oh, we'll walk you around. oh yeah. We Your can tour guide. We can actually do a tour online <laughs> before. Oh, we nice. Yeah. Okay, we can use the, the iPad. Uh, <laughs> we got an yeah, man. So thanks everybody. We're gonna Thank unplug them and do the tour now. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to do birds that harmonize. I'll stay with you. <laughs> <laughs> Seventy people RSVP'd. I don't know they <laughs> They're all gonna watch the live stream. Okay, so the only thing is we got to make sure that you your mic is working. Yes, because when I unmuted you before, it wasn't. Thank you guys for joining us. Patricia says thank you, Kalib, for curating this amazing exhibit. Um, Rudolph Ross says hearts and like. Christopher Wright and Rillick Zug say thank you and they like. Thank you guys for watching. And we're going to do a little tour here. Let's see.
thank you again for joining us for the live stream. Um, if you didn't get here in time to see the entire broadcast, feel free to log back in to um, the History Fort Lauderdale YouTube channel and the full recording will be available um, later on this evening. Thank you for joining us. Thank you to uh, Broward Cultural Division, Florida Department of State, um, Visit Lauderdale, and um, I think those are our major sponsors for this one, but thank you so much. Bye-bye.